how's it going? Let's check out what's been happening in the news. Recently, Australia's government announced it wants to start sorting and processing all of our recycling waste right here. At the moment, most of it is being shipped overseas and a lot of it is ending up in landfill. That's something many people have been unhappy about, including one kid in South Australia. So she's demanded answers straight from the Prime Minister. Hi BTN, I'm Ashley and I'm on a mission to find out what's been going on with the stuff we've been putting in here. A lot of our recycling is shipped overseas to be sorted and turned into something that can be sold over there. But recently, some of the countries we've been selling our waste to have said they don't want it anymore. And apparently, heaps of our recycling is now ending up in landfill. I needed answers and I decided to go right to the top. Hi, Prime Minister. Hi, Ashley. It's great to be here with you. Are people wasting time recycling? There's a bit of a promise being broken. See, when you put that little plastic bottle in the bin, well, you think it's going to be recycled. And just about 12% of all plastics are recycled all around Australia in total. So that's not good enough. We've got to fix that. Could you do more to encourage big businesses to create less waste in the first place? Yes, and part of that is, is you know, what we expect when we go to the shops and what we buy, whether you know, we use reusable cups or all these sorts of things. That's what, at the end of the day, changes what big business do, what you decide to do. Prime Minister, thank you so much for coming to BTN. Thank, thank you, you, Ashley. Thank you. If you want to see more of that story, there's a longer version on the BTN website. And make sure you tune in next week because the Prime Minister of Australia will be answering your questions, so don't miss it. How much sugar do you reckon this bottle of soft drink contains? Well, finding the answer could soon be a lot easier. It's 16 teaspoons, by the way. Health ministers from around Australia have asked for a review into making added sugars a compulsory part of food labelling so people have a better idea of what they're buying. Two kayakers in Alaska have had a lucky escape. They got a little too close while filming a glacial bridge. All right, so y'all just saw that. We, uh, we survived, but that was insane. Now, when you think of hyenas, the Lion King might come to mind. And if it does, well, you might not be the biggest fan. They did try to eat Simba. But fact is a little different from fiction. So we sent Liv to Monado Zoo in South Australia to find out why hyenas are actually quite lovable. They're quick, can chomp up a bone pretty fast, and they're definitely not camera shy. These African animals are super interesting. For example, did you know that hyenas live in really big families called clans? And the ladies are in charge. They're what we call a female-dominated society, so they they have an alpha, an alpha female rather than having an alpha alpha male. So a certain movie comes to mind that's given the hyenas a bit of a reputation. Look, I've heard The Lion King is uh, <laughs> giving them a little bit of a bad rap. Mufasa. Mufasa. I guess most people's impression of hyenas before they actually meet them is that they're you know they're quite snarly, nasty, smelly stinky sort of animals that sort of skulk around and, you know, aren't very nice. In reality, they are very different to that. They're quite placid and quite mild most of the time. Well, turns out hyenas are full of surprises and you probably shouldn't believe everything you see in the movies. And finally, we're combining the powers of fire, ice and sand to create a segment like no other. It's out in the elements. While platypuses aren't usually known for their skiing abilities, this one seemed to be ploughing its way through the snow pretty confidently. It interrupted some actual skiers in Tasmania before scooting off, presumably in the direction of less frozen water. This is the International Fireworks Festival in Moscow, where eight countries battle it out to create the most dazzling display. Host Russia took out first prize. Boom! And look at this gigantic sand sculpture. It's really big. Whoa. It stretches more than 17 metres long. 2,000 tonnes of sand was brought in to create a bunch of sand sculptures for this international festival in Israel. As you can probably tell, the theme was fairy tales. Magical. 
next week. Make sure you're watching the show because we have asked the Prime Minister of Australia your questions and he has answered. Yep, those ones that you commented below. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on seeing what he had to say.